When it comes to cooperative streaming, you have to have that certain vibe. You have to make sure that the chemistry actually matches and it doesn't look awkward at all. But in Phil's case, he has that really awkward tension with his wife when he played Like a Dragon Infinite Wells, Dontoko Island. Now, everyone seems to know that if you can't really play a single player game cooperatively, but as I stated before, if you are entertaining enough and you actually have good chemistry, you can take any game and make it cooperative, just depends on how it's done. In the case of Phil and his wife playing the game though, it just wasn't really that enjoyable. All it was was just Kat playing the game and Phil talking and looking at the chat, while Kat didn't really look like she wanted to be a part of it. And yet, for some reason, he wanted it to be a recurring theme. Until she decides to up and leave, leaving Phil all alone in his office. Okay. Alright, well, it's about it. I'll just see how much I can do in like the next 10 minutes. Can't you just tell how awkward this is just by the way that Phil is talking, the way a cat is just like slouched over, not even wanting to be there? It's completely awkward though. I have seen clips of this and it just looks incredibly boring. It just doesn't look right. Like there's a weird tension going on. For some reason, Phil keeps thinking that this is a good idea and he wanted people to invest in trying to get Cat to come on more often. Baby, if you're tired, you can, you can, you don't have to stick around. If you're really sore and tired, you can go. Yeah. I really don't like the fact that Phil keeps doing it. I was like, yeah, baby, if you're tired, like it's this fake Phil. Every single time that Cat's on or he's doing something with other people, the fakeness comes out because he's just pretending that he's a nice guy. It's like, look at me. I'm spending time with my wife. I'm not disgusting. I actually treat her with respect. And it's just like, <laughs> really? You do? Did you force her to come on? Did she want to come on her own volition? Oh, no. No, scratch that. You wanted her on. You forced her on. I need, I need to stand up. All right, go ahead. No one's, no, baby, no one's forcing you to be here. I mean, you already know what you're doing, so. Yeah, you can take. No one's forcing you to be here. I had to ask Kat if she wanted to be on my streams, and I kept asking her. That sounds like she's being forced on here. Go off for the night. Just say goodbye to everyone. Bye. That's all. Bye. <laughs> she's beat. You have to, guys, you have to understand. Kat is not used to doing this. She is not a streamer in any capacity. Phil, she is what people would like to consider, and I quote, a normal human being that doesn't stream for a full-time career. That is also in quotes. But she used to do this as a hobby until you slid into her DMs telling her, hey, this is OBS advice. And yet, after that, we all know the story with it, though. You told her not to get on social media anymore, stop streaming, and just be my little soulmate. So nice. it's exhausting to her to do this. She's trying, you know, you guys wanted to see her be here part of gameplay, right? No one asked, Phil. Nobody said, hey, we need Kat on the streams more often. No, it's mostly you because it's so meaningful to you. And she's doing her absolute best, but I totally get it. <clears throat> here, let me, let me now sit down here. This yeah, let me take back my fucking seat because my bitch, I mean, my wife isn't in there anymore. This way. That's right, Sambuka. She already played through the whole thing. She's already seen all of this, you know? Then why couldn't you do this by yourself? Of course not. You want to do this because she knows everything about Don Doko Island. To her, nothing here is like new or eye opening. It's stuff that she's already done. So she's. So that kind of answers your own question with it, though. She's already done it before. Why do it even more? Because people get burnt out on stuff like this. If they just keep doing the same thing over and over and they already seen it before, burnout is a thing. But Phil doesn't seem to put her feelings or just her mental state into question. Instead, it's, oh, I want her on my stream, guys. Oh, guys, I'm a loving husband. Now, please tip me. She's literally just here helping us to make this more interesting. Helping us. When it's actually helping you, because all you're doing is exploiting your wife to get more money. And um, from what I've seen, $80, it's not doing so well. To be honest, if I was doing this by myself with you guys, it'd probably be pretty boring. To have her here, it makes it a little bit better, right? No, it'll still be fucking boring. But I totally get it. She's, she's beat. She already did all this stuff. Yeah, just look at this guy trying to be like, oh yeah, it's so boring if it's just me, but with Cad, it makes it more interesting, Taha. 
<laughs> Jasper, she went downstairs. You want to go see her? Get the fuck out of my office, you stupid cat. I mean, my loving son, Jasper. Now, he, now he's settled in on the floor, but I was figuring get him out of here. Yes. That way, I could finish and and do the the daily wrap and everything. Yeah, Jasper. Let's get out of here, okay? While Phil was trying to get Jasper out of his office, apparently some people in his chat actually had some questions to ask. It actually had some comments to say about the whole thing about Cat being on stream. One of them may actually ask, why are you forcing her to play a game she's already played? And another one commented about multiple times a stream seems kind of forced, which it pretty much is though, because it looks like she doesn't want to be there at all. Phil wanted her on because it was meaningful to him and that he wanted to bring it out because of the Mike Klum documentary. When in reality, Kat doesn't need to be on there anymore because he canceled the whole thing with Mike Klum. And yet, for some reason, he thought that bringing her on was a good way to make some money. And then some moron says, why are you forcing her to play a game? Go fuck yourself. You're doing that, Phil, because she's already done this. She's already done with Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. She wants to play Persona 3 Reload, Phil. Look, go let her play that. He didn't force her to do anything. She wanted to come back to streams, and she wanted to do this. Hmm, did she really want to come on the streams on her own volition, or did you tell her to do it? It's like, she doesn't really want to be on there. Every single time that we've seen you interact with Kat on your streams, it looks fucking boring. She doesn't want to be there, you don't want her there, and it just looks awkward as fucking fuck. So you can sit kiss my fucking ass, I hate idiots like that. Yeah, as you see, I had her tied up, right? I had her drugged and tied up, and I threw her in here tonight. That's what happened, right, you fucking asshole? Uh, Phil, I don't think you'll be able to tie her up and pick her ass up and just take her to your office. I mean, for God's sakes, you're bad back and all. Fucking morons. <laughs> Those kind of people drive me nuts. Anyway, I did have the camera in the wrong position. I was wondering why the camera looked like it was so far that direction. I must have hit it earlier. I totally must have hit the camera and it wasn't centered. Or you just did it and you thought it was centered and then everything looked hunky-dory until she left. So there you go. <clears throat> Here's an idiot saying she wasn't playing. Uh, she was here for the entire first hour and a half playing. She just had to be the controller in the last 20 minutes because she was tired. So you can go fuck yourself too. Even though for the last 20 minutes she really wasn't playing it though. She didn't really want to play the game that much, Phil. Due to the fact that, again, she's already played this. She's already burnt out. She wants to play another game. But no, you're just going to delude yourself to believing that she was playing, guys. Look, I didn't play because I was talking. The dumb troll's coming in here to try to be dicks now, you know. Are you sure that was actually a troll? Because I see the crowd. It might have been a fan of yours, but who knows? Fucking idiots. Anyway. <clears throat> oh, looky there. As soon as Cat left, the clearing of the throat comes out. The goose is actually really happy for once. I'll scoot. Yeah, fuck out of here, you stupid fucking chair. The chair over. I'll see if I can scoot the chair back to where it's supposed to be. Oh, careful, Phil. You might hurt your back and we might make jokes about it again. Of course I got louder because I moved. No, it wasn't the fact that you moved, Phil. It's due to the fact that you upped the fucking gain on your microphone. Ah, my back! Ah, and now I move this here. There we go. Right? So now... Also, that pop filter did not do anything. He just wasted money on a pop filter where he's not even getting close up to the mic. Instead, he's just back to where he's normally sitting, back to where he's always positioned, and people think that that's professional. By people, I mean Phil. I'm going to be totally different volume, of course, and I'm going to make the game volume louder, because now... Oh god, he's gonna he's gonna ruin the audio again. <laughs> god damn it, Phil. Just leave it alone. You can hear me louder, so now you're gonna want to hear the game louder, right? Phil, that defeats the whole purpose though. People want to hear the game, but they want to hear the fucking streamer. They want to hear the commentator. It's like if I just did like the whole thing and I just boosted my audio so fucking loud that no one wants to hear me talk. Anything else stupid someone wants to say? So I can just deal with you now before I finish the stream. <laughs> Any other yeah, you should have just finished the stream as soon as Kat said, hey, I'm done. I'm going to lay down. You could have just ended the stream right then and there, but no, you had to be a big man by banning people. Idiotic thing you'd like to say to talk out of your ass and look like an idiot so I can publicly embarrass you? Wait, Phil, the only person that's embarrassing themselves is you because you're just talking out of your ass again because you think that doing this makes you a big man. It makes your ego go from uh, two centimeters to maybe three. Okay, so we hit three stars, 
They're talking about waste disposal. I don't know what that is. Yeah, and someone in his own chat was like, Dare expand a bunch tonight, thoughts? Oh yeah, that's gonna be either A, ignored or B, banned. What 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 do you guys recommend I do to finish the stream? Because I'm all derailed and, and freaking confused, right? Well, Phil, what you could do is, uh, I don't know. In the stream. So after his disaster stream with Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, he went on to do the daily wrap. So he goes on to do his normal book report. Normally, I don't cover the daily wrap, but I want to see how he really felt with that whole stream going down. But it's also just to see what he'll say. Because knowing Phil, he'll say something on one hand and then say something completely different the next. Tonight was our second co-op stream, that's Kat and I, my wife and I, of Dondoko Island in Like a Dragon Infinite Well. Huh, I had no idea who your wife really was. I thought her name was Pamela. Last time around when we did it for the first time on Wednesday, it was very fun. It was the first time we had ever done co-op gameplay. It felt fresh. We were the first time on the island. We were exploring. We were building. We were doing all this first time stuff, and it was very neat. Uh-huh, it was very neat. Even though when we saw you streaming it, you both looked incredibly bored, just like the second stream. The audience was engaged and having a good time having a lot of questions for us that were good, qu interesting questions, not intrusive, stupid questions, and it was really well done. Uh-huh, it was really well done, huh? No one spamming questions in the chat generated towards Cat. No, the only questions you would allow is questions generated towards you, or if there were questions generated towards Cat, you answered for her and just talked over her. But at the same time, though, she didn't look like she really wanted to be there, so questions were off the table. Everyone seemed to enjoy it, and we were actually very much looking forward to tonight. <coughs> tonight was boring. All right? And that's not the fault of the audience. That's not the fault of us. It's the game. Don't go island when you get to the, the set two-star ranking. It introduces a farm. And all the farm does is you can grow crops, you can train your Sujimon, and you can get extra money. Keep all this in mind. He said it wasn't their fault, and it wasn't the audience's fault. But it's the game's fault itself. It's like, Phil, do you not understand that in order to keep your audience entertained and engaged, you have to interact with your own audience? You and Kat had to do something to make it worthwhile. But you never did that, though. Because you both looked like bored bumps on a log, and you just did nothing. It's not necessarily the game's fault, Phil. People could take anything from Ride to Hell Retribution to E.T. for the Atari 2600, and at least they can make that entertaining not for the sake of the game being bad haha ha, let's laugh at it but it's always the sake of the streamer that does so but you don't seem to understand that quite a lot or i think also you can get extra crafting items but all you're doing is assigning your sujimon to the farm and they just do it themselves there's no action on your behalf outside of that you literally hit the formula of all on dodoko island which is incredibly repetitive Yet, you thought this was all a good idea to do streams on with your wife. You kept gassing it up, saying that it's going to be the best. My wife, my mom wife, is going to be on the stream to help me with this, and we're going to play it. You did gas this up, Phil, and it just didn't work out to your own benefit. Destroying trash, gathering resources, crafting a few things here or there, fighting off intruders, opening up new areas, clearing them out, and pleasing the guests. Wash, rinse, repeat. It's an endless cycle and endless grind. Yeah, it's an endless grind that you thought would make for good content. Like, I'm going to, like, interlude myself with this a little bit more by saying Skull and Bones would have been a lot better for you and your wife to actually do something with it, Phil. But no, you decided to put that on your podcast by talking how bad it was, and that was that. You just squandered and pissed away a good opportunity to do something with your wife. We started doing it, and our goal for tonight was we had just hit two-star resort rating when we played it on Wednesday night. By the end of tonight, we wanted to hit three-star resort rating. All right? When we started off playing, we're feeling positive and fun. We're interacting with the audience, which is great. I didn't really see any much interaction with your own audience. The only time you ever interacted with your audience is if people gave you money or you had to ban somebody or just tell them to stop asking stupid questions. Other than that, nothing we're starting to get bored like i could tell i look i watch my wife you can tell she's happy all of a sudden she's feeling she's looking drained she's looking more stoic she's not really talking as much she's just kind of going through emotions like i can tell she's bored yeah she's very bored of it because being around you phil i would be bored too and i was bored too like there wasn't much going on in the game well here's another thing with this though phil she did play this game already she already experienced Dondoko island and actually got everything to five stars so she doesn't really want to play this anymore if she's already beaten the game why go back and play it again? Because it just burns someone out of the whole experience with it. Gather more bugs. Do more of this. And then it's like, now you got to keep track of all these million things. 
Please the guest. Oh, wait, we were supposed to clear this area out for trash so you can build the bridge and you can clear it out and you can have a new area of the island to go. Oh, but now you gotta catch new fish to raise your popularity rating and you have to star level up all the items on the island. It's just, it's a scatterbrained repetitive mess. It's a scattered brain repetitive mess. Even though most of the shit that you're describing, you don't have to do it all at once. You can pace it out. But the thing is with you, though, Phil, you don't know anything about pacing. Instead, you want to think that you got to do everything all at once and just get it all completed. You don't have to do that, Phil. But again, this isn't the game's fault. It's your own. And it's just not very fun. Um, when you're playing a game like Animal Crossing, right? It feels fun because you feel like you're actually building an island you want to live on with all these virtual residents that you can befriend and care about. That doesn't happen on Dondoko Island. Literally, the only reason you're doing it is to get through the minigame to make money. Like, that's it. Once you get through the minigame, you get a giant reward at the end. It's a ton of money, and that's all well and good. Both of them have the same concept with it, though. It whole based around management. How do you spend your time on Animal Crossing or... Dondoko Island, it's completely subjective how you want to play it, though. But the main difference between those two games, one of them actually helps you out in the main game, while the other one, it is the main game. It's just clear as day that he really doesn't like anything that deals around management. Any management game out there, he doesn't really want to play it. But he wants to elude the fact that he likes it, but he wants to delude himself to believing he likes it, but he really doesn't. There's really no feel of longevity or replayability. You just know you're grinding through it. Even though that's essentially what the game is implying, giving you replayability. To do it. Now, my wife even said when she did it the first time. Yeah, when she did it the first time by herself. She enjoyed it a lot more because she was treating it more like an island she cared about. She was setting it up to have decorations and things in a way that she liked and stuff like that. But she was disappointed because when she got to the end, it got so grindy. She was just turboing through it. Like she was paying doko bucks to basically cheat her way through it to finish it fast. Well, a few things with this one. One, she did the pay to win thing, which you tend to do all the time. I mean, look at WWE Champions, the pay to win system for you. But also number two, she's playing the game by herself. She knows what she wants in the game for her. But when you brought her on for the stream, it really didn't have anything to offer. You didn't communicate with her what you wanted for your island. Instead, you just gave it all to her. It's like, hey, honey, you got to do it for me. You be my workhorse for the day. It was just her doing it for you. And then, again, pure boredom. And then when she got five stars, she never went back. She's like, I was done. I got the money. I ran. I never went back. There's no point. Also, another thing I want to add. Uh, why don't we hear Kat actually explaining this other than what you're thinking what she said and just taking her own words out of context and just putting your own fill into it. You know, we got maybe 90 minutes into tonight's stream and she was dead tired. She even said to me, I'm sore. I'm not having a good time. I said, all right, I'll take over. I'm sore and I'm tired. Really? Sore and tired from playing fucking video games. That is purely fucking unhealthy. Due to the fact that you have to sit there and you're struggling to keep yourself awake and you're sore. Like, oh my god, Phil, you both are really unhealthy. So I grabbed the controller and I played for like another 20 minutes. And then basically I could tell, I said, you could, you could take off if you want. You know, if you're not having fun, that's the whole point of her being on a stream with me is having fun. Uh-huh, but it was clear to say that both of you were not having fun. There was no interactive chemistry going on. What we saw on your streams, it was not fun. It was just you sitting there, towering over her, hoping that she does everything that you said correctly. And she wasn't having fun anymore. She was bored. She was sore. She was tired. I was like, go ahead. Take Keep in mind, they're both fans of Like a Dragon. Take off. I'll finish the stream. And so I did. I stuck around for like another 20, 25 minutes. And basically I finished all the ongoing projects. You know, we had, we had farming projects going on. We had things like that going on. I finished the odds and ends. And I said, well, is this a good logical stopping point? Yes. Okay, good. I would just say that this would have been a whole way just for him to end the streams. Like, hey guys, I'm sorry that we can't continue this. We thought it would be more interesting than what we thought it would be. But it turns out we're not enjoying this. I do apologize for the inconvenience. We'll think of something to do next time. That is what a normal streamer or a normal person would do. But since you're not a normal person or not a normal streamer, you're instead just going to make up excuses to why it sucked and it was all the game's fault. It wasn't your audience's fault and it wasn't y'all's fault. It was the game's. Let's end it here. And basically I quit the island, went to mainland or, or the island of Hawaii, saved. And now I have $96,000. I just love the way that he just had to say $96,000. Like, goddamn. Do you wish you had that money in real life? Because if you did, oh my god, 
your fucking Scopely account and your WWE Champions roster would go through the roof and you'd be staying at number one for at least a month or so. To spend when I play the game again. I had like 500. Now I have 96,000. Okay? So I increased my money output by insane amounts by doing this Dondoko Island for four and a half hours with Cat. Uh-huh, and it was a slog and a grind to get to it, but yet you made your money. Congratulations. It was all still boring. So here's the thing. If you like us doing co-op, you'll probably still like tonight's session. Not really. No one really did. But probably not as much as the first, because admittedly after the first hour, we both get drained and bored and don't really like it anymore. This is coming from people who are big fans of the Like a Dragon Yakuza series. And basically, I, just so everyone knows, I had a conversation with Kat. We're probably not going to do anymore. Uh-huh. We already saw that. And we already knew that it was going to be dropped because you were all so bored and it was a slog and she was tired and sore. She broke a sweat. She never sweats. Like, even me, like, I don't think I'm even going back. I don't see the point. Because outside of Don't Don't Go Island, there's other ways to get money in the game. This is like the one time in the game you need to do it because you get a ton of money. Now I can go back and advance with the story. I love the fact how he says there's other ways to make money, but yet he kind of contradicts himself by saying this was the only way to make money off of it. It's like, Phil, which is it? And all the side content. But now there's going to be other things to do, like the other dungeons and things. <laughs> and those also are way more rewarding because you get other items and things while you're doing them as opposed to just money, which is the point of Don't Don't Go Island. And yet, that was the whole entire purpose of those streams. Money. Because you brought your wife on and you're thinking, Oh, people really like Cat. They might throw money at me because Cat's on. So, honestly, <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm, I'm pretty much done with it. Like, after having played it twice, you know, four and a half hours is how much time it was, playtime. Uh, I think that's it. And I'm sorry to those who were looking for a more extended experience of co-op with Cat and I. I agree with you. We were hoping to do the whole thing. Who was actually asking for this, Phil? Who really wanted you to continue Dondoko Island with your fucking wife? Nobody really asked for that. But the whole thing with Dondoko Island, that seems like something that you could do off screen, though. Just do everything on the side, trying to prepare yourself for the main game. I mean, for God's sakes, most Let's Players that are playing the game will just show it off for like a bit. And then after that, hey, here's our updated version of our Dondoko Island. This is what we did with it. And then all of a sudden, back to the main game. You don't even do that at all. Because you don't want to take the time or the effort to do so. And still, you want to complain that it's the game's fault. Dude, after four hours, we're beat and tired and just bored. Yeah, and I'm just beat and tired of this daily rap. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move on to the cope session that he had throughout his podcast. And I'm going to see how this fares compared to this. We did our co-op stream last night, which was Kat and I streaming Dondoko Island. This is our second session of this virtual island community that's a hybrid between, say, Animal Crossing or Disney Dreamlight Valley or other similar Sim-style games like that. Yep, all these games that he has played and yet dropped them because they were too boring. And the, the goal last night was to hit three-star rating on our resort because when you hit a three-star rating is when you get your next big reward of money that you could spend in the real game outside of the Dondoko Island. So... We sat down to do it, and first of all, just to be completely transparent here, already I could tell it was a stressful day for my wife. She had a bunch of other stuff going on. She was running around. She had to cook a, di a big dinner and everything, and I could tell when she came in here, already she was, like, pissed off from other stuff that had nothing whatsoever to do with the stream. So you thought it would be a good idea to bring her onto the stream and do all the work for you for Dodoko Island? I mean, Phil, who knows if this is real or not, but... We'll play along with it just because it's Phil and all. That's not a good idea to bring on someone who's already tired and already irritated. It's just not going to work out. But Phil, knowing that he needs money really bad, tries to bring on his workhorse to exploit her for money. He was happy to be here. She wanted to do it. Um, but that, you know, already you could tell. Like, that's already the bad, <laughs> the bad start. Yeah, it's a bad start because you brought on someone who is irritated and doesn't want to do anything. They just want to relax. But no, knowing you, you... Tapped on her shoulder by, honey, honey, uh, we need to stream. Come on, we gotta go stream. And she's probably giving you, like, the death stare. Like, I don't want anything to do with you. Fuck off from me. But you still kept annoying her to the point that she came on the stream. And so we sit down to do it. 
and we start to play and we're having fun. We're both having fun again. Like, oh, this is cool. You are having fun with it, looking really fucking bored and staring at the TV and also the chat. What ended up happening was a, a couple of things, all right? Oh, great. He has a couple of excuses to why it didn't work out as well as he wanted it to. When you get people in the chat who want to keep prying and asking silly questions, like, for example, people are asking her about uh, how she does her beauty stuff. Like, this is not a beauty stream. She's not going to sit here and talk to you about her skincare routines and how she does her makeup and stuff like that. It, it's supposed to be a fun co-op gameplay stream. You know, if you were to ask me about my daily routine, about how I do stuff, I'm not going to sit here and talk about that all day either. You know what I mean? Okay, so you're saying that it wasn't their fault, but then the very next day when you did this little show, you're automatically going to say that it is their fault. You're basically going after the people that are asking questions for a cat about how she does her beauty routine, how she does her skincare routine. I mean, granted, Kat could answer this question, but the problem is, is that you don't want her to answer all these questions, though, because you would get bored with it, and you would get so upset that the limelight or the spotlight is not on you, because it always has to be about you. Even if you have other people involved with your projects, or if you're in the interview, you have to make it all about you. But, Phil, it's not always going to be about you. What makes a cooperative stream worthwhile is that both people have the center of attention, not one trying to push the other one away for attention. Well, in this case, it would be kind of hard for you to do because she blocks up the entirety of the screen. So you're getting questioned, prying questions like that. It's like, oh, so you want to respond to everyone in the chat. Uh, Phil, no, you don't. And the whole thing about the skincare routine or the beauty and the makeup part, that's not prying. Prying would have been asking about your taxes or the bankruptcy. That would be a little bit more prying, but... You think that asking about makeup is prying. <laughs> that is entirely fucking stupid. When you get people starting to ask silly things like that, it's like, oh, now, you know, now you got to start pr picking and choosing the commentary that you want to do and talking with who you want to talk about, right? Uh, Phil, you could always skip them. And if you miss the question, you can even say, I apologize, I missed the question. But no, you have to call it silly, stupid, intrusive, and prying. Just because this is Dark Side Phil. He doesn't want to mix in his business life with his personal life. And yes, I'll be honest. There were a couple people who were basically excited to be there, but they, they definitely... And it's not just one person, but it's a few people who are like, I want my question answered, so I'm going to spam it 400 times in the chat. Boom, 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 boom. It's like, oh. Okay, so these people that are asking the questions, and they're just constantly typing in the question because you missed it, that's annoying. But Derek spamming in the chat constantly with your own audience coming to you saying, hey, this guy's annoying, make him stop or get rid of him. You just let that slide. You know, it's draining. Because it's this is something that I literally do all day every day. I'm used to it. Yeah, you're used to it. What, you want a fucking cookie? Cat is not. She was a streamer before you slid into her DMs helping her out with OBS. And then all of a sudden, y'all hit it off while she was cheating on Subaru Man with you. And then, as soon as everything was solidified and the relationship was going stronger, you told her to not stream anymore, to get rid of her social media, and to only pay attention to whatever you wanted, or just go to work. That was the only thing that you wanted out of her. So she's seeing it firsthand. Now she's starting to see the kind of stuff that I have to handle literally every single day. Uh, Phil, she did have that before, but until you told her to stop. And it starts to get to you. Like, oh my god, every time you look at the chat, it's the same people, the same questions, the same thing over and over. It's like, oh my god. Phil, you're really not cut out to be a streamer at all. If you're getting so irritated by looking at the chat and having all these people asking you questions or spamming your chat, it's just clear as day, it's not meant for you. There are many people that actually do stream, and they actually get a lot of people just talking one amongst themselves, and it just spams the entire chat, and it just goes really quick. I've seen a lot happen to a lot of people's streams, and you know what they do? They either have A, someone that can actually look at the chat and say, oh, hey, this person said something, and then they acknowledge it, discuss about it a little bit, and they move on. Or they just completely ignore it and just move on, play the game. Or they have text-to-speech, which you don't want to do that because that was the case. Ooh, boy, you would get so annoyed. But then in combination with that, so I, I would say last time when we did it, earlier in the week, it was more first time doing it. It was more fun because it was the early stages of the Dondoko Island where everything's getting set up. You're having your first guest. You're doing your initial setup. It's a lot more interesting and fun. Was it more fun, though? Because it looked like this very same thing for the second stream. You both looked bored, very awkward to be around each other, and it was just not very engaging. Okay. And I'll be honest, people were excited to see her back. Remember, she hadn't been on a stream in a, in a few weeks. 
So it was exciting to see her back. People had genuine interesting questions and things like that, correct? But yet you call those questions stupid, intrusive, prying, and very annoying. But the reason why you want her on is because the Argentinian memberships and the twelves were ruining my business. I figure if I bring on my horse, I mean my wife, maybe I can make some money out of this. Was initially what was going on in your head. But then, last night, not only are we coming back only a few days after the last co-op session, so it's relatively quick since the last one we did, but now the game is becoming way more grindy. Well, Phil, here's the problem with that, though. The game is grindy, but this is for optional shit. You don't have to do it right then and there. The smart thing to do for this would have been, okay, we did the first stream. We could come back either a week or two, maybe even a month later, and we'll do Dondoko Island yet again. But you didn't even do that. Because as soon as that was done, you are already playing the next stream a few days later. So it really just kind of just burns itself out relatively fast. And what I mean by that is, in two hours, our first session, we got two star levels. So it was level one, level two, double rewards, big momentum. It took us the entirety of last night's stream to hit the three star resort level. Yeah, because the game actually progresses and actually wants you to do more things. You expect it to give you like three stars like that? It's not going to be happening, Phil. You have to work for it. Or, excuse me, your workhorse cat had to work for it. Okay? So it's a grind at this point. It's like, you got to keep building more stuff. You got to build the right stuff to appease the guests. You got to keep collecting and crafting items to get your popularity rating up. You got to be clearing the new areas of the island and then cleaning them out and then raising enough money to buy them. You got to, you know, catch the bugs, fight the intruders, do this, do that. And it, it, after a while, instead of it feeling fun, it becomes more like busy work, right? Uh-huh, just like every single style of a management game. You have to do all these things at once. At least it's not like a game like Cook, Serve, Delicious, where you have to do it and have to be quick about it. With the Dodoko Island for Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, you can actually pace yourself and actually can spread it out, which is something that you don't seem to understand. Now, the one thing that did open up in Dondoko Island last night that was interesting was the farming area. He was about to say fun again, but then he had to correct himself and say interesting. And at first you might think, oh, that sounds like a good, a good new thing. In reality, it's not that interesting. The farming area is just you take your Sujimon, which is basically their take on Pokemon, right? No shit, Phil. I didn't even realize it. I thought it was a parody of Digimon. You take the Sujimon that you've earned during playing the game, and you apply them to various tasks. You can have one area where they train and they level up, so you don't have to use them in combat, but instead they just level up over time naturally for free. You got one area where they work on resources for crafting, and they'll just give you free resources after a certain amount of time. You got one area where they'll work in a workshop, and after a certain amount of time, they just give you the money to do things on the island. And then there's a final area where they're farming, and they'll give you vegetables so that you can now craft other items that raise your, your levels and everything on the island. The thing is, there's literally nothing there of substance. Well, Phil, the way that you're describing it, there's no substance to be had with it, though, because you explain it to it, it looks and sounds really fucking boring. It's one of those things that the people or the player has to experience for themselves in order to figure out if it's going to be for them or not. Or they can just look up a fucking playthrough video of it, of someone who's actually more competent and actually can explain it a little bit better. But the problem with Phil, though, is that he'll look at something and just be like, Oh, wow, this is cool. And then the very next day, wow, this sucks. This was boring. He even named the part that he had his wife on that it was boring. It's like, Phil, you gassed it up. You wanted her to be on for it. You were telling people, hey, this is what me and my wife were going to do. And then all of a sudden, no more. It's literally, you just assign Sujimon and then you just have to wait. So there's nothing to it. And that's the big new thing they add for like between two and three star rating. That's supposed to appease you. It doesn't really appease anything. It's kind of boring, you know? Well, Phil, it's supposed to give you some replayability and just give you a variety of things that you can do for it. For something that's completely fucking optional. No. So basically, here's what happened. We played for one hour. And after that hour, you know, I here's the thing. I, I can read my wife. I can tell when things when her she has a change in attitude or whatever. Not really. If you brought her on and she was already upset, you would have known, hey, do you want to stream? And if she tells you flat out no. Then just ignore it and just do something else. But for a guy that proclaims he can read his wife, cannot read his wife at all. And especially the way that he's trying to like, he's like, oh, hey, honey. He's like touching her with his fingertips. Someone who actually loves their significant other, they want to like be like more intimate with them. They want to like pat their back or just rub on their shoulder like, hey, are you doing okay? Is everything okay, honey? 
They could just do things like that. But you don't do any of this because when it comes to relationships, you're awkward as fuck to be around. Number one, I could tell she was getting tired already. Whoa, really? She was getting tired even though she was looking really fucking bored and she slouched over? Because keep in mind, again, she's not a streamer. She doesn't sit here in this chair all day. She's not used to it. This is the second time in this fucking quote-unquote podcast that he used this excuse. So I could tell she starts to move like this. I could tell, wow, she's uncomfortable. She's probably having like soreness or back pain. Um, from. I mean, I would be very uncomfortable if I had to sit next to you. Sitting here and I could tell like interacting with the chat wasn't as fun. Like there wasn't as many interesting questions or really discussions that we were doing. I thought you were saying that people were spamming the questions and it was getting too intrusive and stupid for you. Now you're saying that there wasn't any. So it was like the game's getting kind of boring. She's getting tired and sore. And basically we're not having much conversation of meaning with the chat. Because you don't even know how to engage with your own chat. You don't even know how to engage with your own wife in conversation. What you think a conversation should be is that someone's talking, you talk right over them. So it's kind of like the tri trifecta of, oh god, this is kind of not working right now. Then again, Phil, this whole thing never worked out for you. But keep deluding yourself to believing that it worked. So basically after about an hour, I asked her, you know, would you like me to jump in? And that way, you know, we could tag out, basically, I can play. And you can just, you know, help me with some of the suggestions or whatever. So he said, yeah, so that's what we did. So Yeah, then whenever you took the controller, she looked like she didn't want to be there anymore. Like, she was so irritated and so done. Like, she was leaning back in the chair, leaning forward. She was looking like a goddamn child. I started playing in the second hour. Yeah, I could just immediately tell that his leg is shaking up and down because he's trying to think of a lie to try to cover his ass and believing that it wasn't a disaster stream, it wasn't my fault, it wasn't her fault, it was everyone else's fault, it was the game's fault, when in reality, it was mostly Phil's fault. And even that, I can tell you, I started playing, I was bored. Like, I was, I was fucking starting to knock, knock, no kidding, I'm sitting here with my wife next to me with a live stream of hundreds of people and my eyes are starting to droop. Phil, you do this every single time you play Like a Dragon or any Yakuza game. It has been clearly shown that every single time you play a Yakuza game, you're drooping and you're passing the fuck out. I was like, dude, this is fucking boring. Well, Phil, you are indeed a very boring person. Like, wow. And then, so basically, here's the thing. I talked to Kat off camera about it. Off camera, when you should have just said, hey, let's discuss with it with the chat. You know, trying to make it more engaging, but no, off camera because it's too personal. And I was like, wow, that was really boring. She goes, yeah, like now she's realizing, she's like, when I did it myself, she was doing it in the living room, on the couch casually. Crying downstairs. Right? Relaxed atmosphere. There's no pressure to make progress. If she got bored, she could leave and go play more of the game and then go back to it. Yeah, because she was playing by herself. She had more control of the game than what you were trying to do on the stream. I mean, it's clearly a night and day comparison how she's enjoying the game away from you playing by herself than trying to do things for you in Dodoko Island. It's like, can you not read your wife very fucking well? It wasn't like, oh, we're really concretely for two and a half hours just trying to make progress in it. No, no, Phil, you're trying to do it for two and a half hours, trying to make something happen, trying to make content by using your wife as a prop. So what happens is you take a mode that's meant to be more like a casualized mode that you do from time to time to earn currency for your game, and you turn it into, like, work. Even though it's completely optional, Phil, you don't have to do it. And it doesn't actually work like that. It gets boring when you treat it like that, you know? It's like going into Monster Hunter Freedom Unite and just doing the farm multiple times. Just going to a quest, leaving the quest, going back to the farm. It gets repetitive and boring as the grind fest. Granted, Monster Hunter Freedom Unite or the Monster Hunter games are great on its own. But if you do it for a long period of time, you do get a little bit burnt out. Which is something that Phil doesn't seem to understand. Especially with Dondoko Island. If you're doing it over and over and over and over and over again, you're going to get tired of it relatively fast. If... It were more riveting or interesting or actual meaningful progress in the story or gameplay probably would have loved it 
but instead it just ends up feeling like a boring grind. Hey, uh, Phil, I thought you and your wife loved games like Disney's Dreamlight Valley and Animal Crossing. So this would have been such a riveting gameplay, and it would have been a good stream to talk about things like that, but mm, no. And it doesn't really work like that. It's real. I think it's more meant to every once in a while you go back and you grind it, and then you break it up with progress in the game, and then you go back again. No fucking shit, Sherlock. So, yeah, basically it got really boring. Oh, I gotta take a sip of my, my gin water. Boring sips. Glub, glub. And so basically what happened was, uh, after about an hour and a half, I want to say, or maybe an hour 45 minutes, because we were nearing the end of the stream anyway. I think it was like 20 minutes left on what I had scheduled to do for the stream. I said to her, I can tell you're not having a good time. You know, do you want to take off? And she's like, yeah, I do. I was like, all right, well, thanks. You know, thank you for joining us. I'm, I'm so happy she gave it a shot, right? No, you didn't. Whenever she was getting tired or just not wanting to be there, you were like, you don't have to be here if you don't want. No one's forcing you to. And it's, it's just very creepy. The way that he would just call her baby or honey or sweetie. It's fake. Because every single time that Phil would try to do anything with his wife on camera, it's fake as fuck. And as soon as she left... Oh yeah, the fake mask just popped right off and the real Phil showed his true colors. I mean, that was about four to five hours of gameplay of Dundogo Island that she helped us with. No, 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 helped you with. Didn't help anyone else. Just you. And made great progress. I wouldn't have made as much progress as I did in it if I had done it for myself. So I'm happy that she was here to help us and get as far as we did. And by the way, we did hit the three-star resort rating. We did it. No, Phil, she did it. You did not. So I got another big reward. Now I have $96,000. Which I wish I could have that while I pick at my face. To spend in the game when I actually play it again uh, on Monday night. We're going to actually have tons of progress. Like tons. Which is... Yeah, tons of progress. It's just going to be you doing tons of nodding off. Excellent. I can't wait to play it again tomorrow night and reap the rewards of everything that we just did over the last two nights of co-op, uh, you know, it's going to be great. But but it's going to be really fucking boring, just like every single time you do play a Yakuza or like a Dragon stream. We were hoping for something better. We were hoping to do the whole thing. We were hoping it was going to be more interesting. And quite frankly, the mode just doesn't hold up. Phil, just stop saying the whole thing with the we is me mentality, because in reality, you were hoping that it would be better than what you thought. Not this whole we shit. You were hoping to use your wife for multiple fucking streams to try and make money out of it. But as soon as you saw that nobody was biting, all of a sudden you were like, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore because apparently no one wants to give me money. But Kat's right there. Nobody cares. After having talked to Kat after the stream, she was like, yeah, she, it's not that she, wa she was upset or anything, <clears throat> but she was just feeling so fatigued because, no, number one, again, she's not a, a streamer. She's not. Third time he said that, but fatigued? Phil, you're not going to feel fatigued when playing a fucking video game. It's not like you're going to the salt mines mining for fucking salt. But if we do that, we just watch you play a fighting game or a shooter. Then you get really salty with it. It's not like you're doing a hard day's fucking work. Dealing with a lot of fucking people in person and just trying to get by at your job. It's not like that at all, but this is just delusion. Just coming out in its biggest form. Used to sitting here for two, three hours in a row, not getting up, not stretching, not taking a break. She's not used to sitting in this chair. Well, looking at the way that that chair is done, there's no real wiggle room because apparently the way the chair looks, there's like a curve where the legs are and the only circulation that's there, it's from the ankle all the way to maybe not even close to a foot maybe like eight inches that's all that that's there for that chair but again she's not doing that though because she's just staring at the tv focused on the game she's not doing anything like taking breaks like what most people would say if you're playing a video game to take breaks from it even you don't do that phil but you want to say oh i gotta get up and stretch which is just you going off the far off screen and again when she did it for herself she was in the living room downstairs. She could take breaks. She could trade, tag in and out to do the main story. Again, she was playing by herself. She actually felt more relaxed. It felt like she had control of the game, unlike being a part of the stream where she had no real control. So it wasn't boring. This was becoming incredibly boring doing it the way that we were doing to her, for her. And again, yeah, you were about to say to her instead of for her. The thing again, though, Phil, you were supposed to interact with her and actually play the game with her. But what it turned out to be was just 
her playing the game, you talking and looking at your chat, hoping people would give you money. And as soon as the money wasn't coming in, yep, time was up. Go to the glue factory. It wasn't like, like I tell you, like, it, it's kind of similar to, I would say, the two weeks that we did this, the Q&A. The first week that we did Q&A in January, it was refreshing because Cat had come to the streams for the first time in ages. Tons of interesting questions. People, you know, wanting to talk with her for the first time in five years. Yeah, because you basically told her not to come back on the streams anymore. But yeah, all of a sudden you came up with a story about how she wanted to come back on. But at that same time, though, that was when you were working with Mike Klum for the documentary. But now that you're not doing that anymore, Kat's presence should not be there at all. But the fact is that you were desperate for money. You would try to bring her on in. It's like, hey, guys, look at my dear honey wife right here. And throughout the entirety of it, she didn't want to be there. She looked awkward to be around. Same with you. And that was really awesome. The second time we did Q&A, it kind of got played out. Because now you got people coming asking the same questions, running out of interesting questions. Now the questions are getting more intrusive and more private. And Even though the majority of the questions that were quote-unquote prying and intrusive weren't really intrusive or prying at all. But here's the problem with that though, Phil. You're doing a Q&A stream within two weeks of each other. It really gets boring relatively fast. How most people would do it is doing it either every month or every two months. That way, there's more time for questions to accumulate so you can actually answer questions on the fly. But that's the problem with it though. You think what you're doing is intelligent and actually would work, but in reality, it does not work. Stupid things we're not gonna answer, you know. <clears throat> And that's kind of what we felt like happened, like, last night, having done the back-to-back co-op so quickly. Um, and again, that is your fault, though. What most people would do is try to actually separate it within a good time length, which you didn't really do. It just wasn't really fun. And that's the thing, is we, if we're going to do it, if, if Kat's going to come on stream and hang out with us, we want it to be fun. We want it to be a special time, something interesting, something notable, something meaningful, not... We're just grinding through a game now, and who cares if it's fun or not, and we're all bored doing it, but who cares, right? It's stupid. Uh, Phil, here's the thing with that, though. There's a lot of people that actually can do cooperative streams of a bad game and at least make it more entertaining, engaging, and enjoyable. But you don't do any of that, though, because you and your wife are really fucking boring, especially together, because you don't do anything. There's no chemistry. Like, what's the point then? I, I might as well just stream anything else. You could just, oh, I don't know, stop bringing her on the streams because nobody really cares about CAD. As soon as you saw the money wasn't there, yeah, no one cares. Just do your own thing, dumbass, and maybe you could get something out of it. But in reality, it's not looking too bright for you. Let me put it this way. It's not a bad thing that it turned out that way because we hit a major milestone. I've, I've raised so much money in the game that now when we play it again, I'm going to make major progress and strides. Uh-huh. So you hit a milestone, which is three-star resort, and you got a bunch of money for the main story. Whoop-de-fucking-do. But all of a sudden, you're saying that this isn't a bad thing, even though you worked your wife into playing the game she's already played and beaten, and she wants to go play something else. But I'll be honest, like, even... even after <clears throat> that, I don't know if I ever want to go back to that mode. I think Dondoko is basically a mode that if you want to kill time and get these extra rewards, you can do it. Again, it's something completely optional. So Dondoko Island is Dondoko. And at this point of the game, it was important to do it because I need that money to make good progress in the game. Yeah, he needs that money. He really, really does. He needs that money. There's other ways in Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth to level up and or get money like for example once i get better gear and stuff i'll be able to take on the higher levels of the optional dungeon and that optional dungeon pays a ton of money and a bunch of great items as well it's not just about the money outcome but also having a bunch of big rewarding items too which one of them will not be tips or super chats or memberships it won't be any of those for your real life pro like profits so I feel like this is probably the end of us doing that co-op. I don't think we're going to want to do it again. I, mean, I don't think I even want to do it myself again. Because you don't want to do anything that's optional. Even though, granted, you could do that, Phil. Just do it off screen. But you're not intelligent enough to do so. Solo. I don't think I ever want to go back and do Dondoko Island. And it was funny because we're, we're nearing the end of the stream. And Slayer was here helping out with modding. And he goes, oh, so when you play like a dragon, you should do the Sujimon stuff. I was like... Do the Sujimon stuff. It's like we just did five hours of boring-ass grinding 
in this Dondoko Island. And now you think I want to go do Sujimon grinding? Are you out of your mind? Absolutely not. That is the opposite of what we're doing. Essentially him calling a viewer, or actually a moderator, an idiot for giving up suggestion. But keep this in mind. If this wasn't a recurring character in the life of DSP, if this wasn't a moderator, he would have called that person a fucking idiot and told him that he doesn't know anything and to get the fuck out of here. But since it's Slayer, the guy that gives him money doesn't do any of that. And it's really peculiar of who he gives the special treatment to and who he treats with an iron fist by kicking them out. To go back to the main game, we are going to make major progress. We're going to take the new jobs. We're going to unlock more jobs. We're going to buy equipment. We're going to level up. We're going to do fun side mission questing and quirky stuff in the city. That's fun. We're going to make story progress. The last thing I want to do is get stuck into another side mini game thing that takes 10 hours to finish and is incredibly boring. Uh-huh. So you're going to delude yourself into believing that you're going to have fun, or excuse me, that we're going to have fun, when in reality, no one's having fun with it, not even you. So stop gassing up things like saying that it's going to be fun it's going to be enjoyable when rally it's going to be fucking boring so to to summarize okay cat and i thought that we were going to do all of dondoko island we're not doing all of dondoko island we got this th three star level which is essentially like the halfway point and we're we're topping out now we're bored okay uh-huh so what would have taken him at least 10 20 maybe 30 seconds to explain maybe a minute if he's feeling like he has to over exaggerate and over explain it took him 11 to 12 minutes just for him to say hey guys we're not doing dondoko island anymore it's like phil god damn it you you're making oh god fuck that actually hurt my head shit look what you made me do phil we don't want to do it again. I don't want to do it again solo, regardless of co-op. I don't even want to do it again. I think it's boring, and I don't really feel like going back and spending more time doing it. Goddamn, those eye twitches that came out by saying that it was boring, though. You automatically could tell that he's just immediately bored with it, but he's trying to put the blame onto someone else with it. He's putting the blame on Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth for putting in an optional mode that he doesn't like, and he's going after his audience for the questions, and after his moderator for giving him a suggestion. It's, it's just... The downward spiral. Cat is not upset or anything. She just was hoping that it was going to go better and be interesting. And she's now realizing, wow, it's nowhere near as fun doing it like this a second time where we're turboing through it. Again, if this was being done casually, slowly, over time, that's different than, oh, dedicated night streams just to do Dondoko. Again, she already played through the game. She already did Dondoko Island. She wants to move on to something else. And you brought her back on the streams just to do something she's already played and she doesn't want to do anymore. So, again, why did you think this was a good idea? Oh, right. Excuse me. I, I completely forgot. Money. Of course, now, a couple things happen. Number one, it kind of sucks because this was the co-op we were planning to do for a bit. No, you were planning to do it. Cat really didn't have any involvement with it, but you like to proclaim and bring her into your little business by saying that she had involvement with it, when in reality, you were the one that was planning to do all of this. You were hoping that bringing on your wife to do the gameplay streams would give you some extra money, some extra paper, some chicken, but it did none of that. You know, there was supposed to be 10 to 15 hours. We only played five. So we essentially did one third of what we were hoping to do. We were hoping that this co-op would last a few weeks, and now it lasted two sessions. Yeah, two sessions that you didn't even time out well. So again, this is on you, but you want to put the blame onto something else. Right? And now it's done. So, number one, yeah, people were expecting a lot more co-op, and there's no co-op right now, right? That's number one. Um, So, number two, where do you go from here? Because right now, there really are no co-op games out or coming out that we're really interested in. Like, she has zero interest in Helldivers, okay? Again, he's saying that she has no interest in it when reality Phil has no interest in it. And Helldivers 2 is actually a really good game to play, either solo or with friends. It's a better experience with friends, though. We talked about other games. Like, everyone keeps saying stuff like, what about It Takes Two and stuff like that? She's not interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fucking funny. He actually did play It Takes Two because the whole majority of that game's story is talking about a couple going through a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think Phil wants to play that game because, oh my god, divorce coin's going up. You know, we have to do something that we're going to be interested in so that we'll be, it's not us sitting here being boring and just doing it for work. Uh, Phil, you already hit the boring part right on the head multiple times and you still do it even without Cat. Again, it's a, that's what I'm emphasizing is if my wife's going to be involved in my content, 
It has to feel fun, it has to feel special, and it has to feel like something we're interested in. Hey Phil, why don't you just put on a clown outfit and just do the honking noises and the little party streamer and just look like a fucking clown? That might get a little smile out of her, but no, it would just make her feel more embarrassed to be around you. Nah. Oh, she's just coming here to go through the motions of pumping out a piece of, of content. Because then what happens is you're crossing over the realm of private, personal, with work. And I've done that before. Yeah, you've done it before because, again, you brought this out. And you did this to yourself, though. And you want to say that, I don't want to do that anymore. But you still do it to this fucking day. And it's like, Phil... You want to bring her on, but yet you want to pump out content out of her. And you already kind of let that slip out that you're just using her to pump out content. And that's all that you're planning on doing. She's just a fucking prop that you had to go get married and say that your parents were dying. So she's your married prop with a fucking certificate. Many times. You may realize you know, I had other people in my private life, you know, back in the day who were involved in my content. And when you force it to just be work. It doesn't work. Yeah, he's going to talk about people like Leanna, John Rambo, and Howard. People that he was actually friends or actually were in a relationship with just so he could try to make a point that, oh yeah, it doesn't work out. Here's the thing with this though, Phil. If you're trying to do an online presence and if you feel comfortable with bringing out your personal life, that is up to you to do so only if you feel comfortable doing it. But the problem with you though, Phil, when you kept bringing up people in your own personal life, you had this mentality that you could just do whatever you want and bring in whoever you wanted with no repercussions. But it's already too late for you to do anything to change it because you've already done this multiple fucking times. I don't know what's, what comes next. We have to talk about it and try to figure it out. Yeah, we have to talk about it to figure it out. When in reality, it's just going to be Kat going, I don't want to come back on the streams. I've got some suggestions. Someone actually sent me a really nice suggestion, uh... And they were like, so here's what you could do from now on. Whenever there's a new piece of hardware, like for example, a new console comes out or something new that you're getting that you're adding to your setup or whatever, you could do a live unboxing together. You can both investigate and give your takes on this. You can hook, do the initial setup, hook it up, get whatever it is working. Like a perfect example would be the upcoming Switch 2, right? Let's say it comes out. So we get it. We unbox it. We give our opinions on it. We hook it up. We do the initial setup together. We, we each use the controller and give our takes on it. Yeah, I think that's great. Three things that is completely wrong with this. Number one, the Switch 2. Uh, I'm sorry, Phil. I thought that's not coming and that's just a fucking rumor. Even though there's probably more evidence out there that might not be a rumor, but it's very debatable. It's very... It, gets, it gets, creates a lot of skepticism with this one. But also, number two, investigate? What the fuck are you going to investigate? How much is it going to cost? How are you going to put it, like, set it up? And where are you going to buy it from? Is that what you mean by investigate? Because you're treating it like it's a fucking crime scene. And it's just dumb. Also, number three, that's something that will not work out in the fucking slightest. Due to the fact that you'll be crying broke, that you don't have enough money for it, and that the gold lids are just going to toss money at you. But also, four, since I said three, now I'm going to bring out four, that will actually invade into your personal private life as well because Kat can be exposed even more and you're just going to bring her on, just exploit her even more and then people can actually see that gut of hers and it's like something that you don't want people to see and no one should see it but yet you think it's going to be a great idea over everyone else giving you suggestions of what games to play. I think that's a lot better than just me doing it. But the question is, how often does that happen? Not very often, <laughs> right? That's not a common thing that we go like, oh yeah, let's do that next week. Uh, no, that, you know, that doesn't happen that often. It's not going to happen very often because he needs to beg for that money so he can get a new console. Often. So that works, just it's going to happen every several years. It's not a common thing, right? So, you know, what else do you do? And again, people are recommending games that we're not interested in. Play a way out. Play it takes two. Play it. These are all the same style of game, and really, there's no interest in them. Really, Phil? So people are actually giving you suggestions of what you should play with your wife or what you could play, and you're completely disregarding them. Phil, there are a lot of games that you could play that are out now, both retro and modern, that you could both fucking play. You could play games like Overcooked 2. That game is really enjoyable, especially with a co-op element. You could play something like Mario Party, Mario Kart, 
you can play all those games. You can even boot up Tekken or Street Fighter and just do like some competitive matches together. Casual matchmaking in the works. But no, you're not going to do any of this though. Because looking at all of this, you want people to give you suggestions, but you're looking at it and you're getting annoyed with the suggestions that you get though. So if you really want to make this a little bit better, just don't bring her back on the streams anymore. Because A, she doesn't want to be a part of it. B, you're just using her for money. And C, every single time people are giving you suggestions of what you two could play, you're just tossing to the side saying, fuck off. So, maybe if something new comes out that's co-op and it looks interesting to us, we'll do it together. Really? You're going to go for something that's new instead of something that's already out? Like, are you trying to get day one views off of a co-op game? <laughs> Oh my god, Phil. Oh my fucking god. You're so based around greed, aren't you? Maybe if there's a game that's a shorter game, but it looks like there could be like maybe co-op commentary or something on it would work. Maybe that would work. Phil, what commentary would there be? Just here going, heh heh heh, and you saying something completely stupid and talking over her? Yeah, great idea for co-op commentary that's not even gonna fucking be there. Right? Um, I don't know. You know, one thing that I thought, and this is just me throwing this out there. What if every once in a while, whenever she feels like it, Cat actually comes and does co-op commentary with me on a regular Like a Dragon Infinite Well stream? That actually is a bad idea, Phil, due to the fact she's already played the game. She doesn't want anything to do with Like a Dragon Infinite Well. She would rather play Persona 3 Reload instead. But no, you want to bring her on and just commentate on a game that she's already finished. And also... It's not going to work out due to the fact that she'll probably tell you, hey, honey, you need to do this, but you're going to completely ignore her, do things your way, get upset with the game, and then the mask comes sliding off slowly, the fakeness just comes right out, and your real colors show out, and then all of a sudden, it'll just become a complete disaster. Like the real game, not the fucking Don Doko grind bullshit. But actually just like watching and commenting on the real game together. I love the fact that he immediately wants to shit talk the local island when he was saying that it was going to be a great thing. <laughs> Way for him to flip flop like that. Right? Because I know she likes the game. That maybe could be fun just to have her do it on the regular playthrough. But it doesn't have to be all the time. There's no commitment to time of her coming to do that. It would just be if she feels like it, she could come in and hang out if she wants, you know? And or she'll probably get so annoyed by you poking at her shoulders. Like, honey, honey, come on. You gotta come commentate with me, honey. I need you, honey. Blah, 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 blah. And she's gonna get so annoyed with you that she has to come on just to shut your ass up. That way there's no pressure. Maybe there'll be a day when she wants to do it and she pops in to do it. And then another day she just doesn't want to do it at all. So she, there's no promise that she was going to. So it's not a big deal. Oh, Jesus Christ. Was that ear pick really worth it, Phil, while you were talking? Because it looked like you found something in your ear and it felt really good just to scratch your own ear. Right? <clears throat> so, I don't know. That's, that's just one idea I had, you know. But outside of that, right now, yeah, I really don't have too many ideas. Because you have no real ideas. Except exploiting your wife for money, forcing her to come on the streams when she doesn't want to, and relying on your chat for any ideas, which you're going to completely disregard and yell at them and tell them to shut the fuck up. Uh, what else we could be doing... Um, you know, I can tell you this, like some people are saying, what about her doing react content? She doesn't only one person said, bring her on for the react content. She doesn't, she doesn't even like the DSP versus the internet show that I do every week. Like she, oh, I'm sorry. I thought she actually liked watching your streams. And now all of a sudden you're saying she doesn't like watching all of your streams. She was liking it during the holidays when we were having holiday themed stuff. But now when you watch the show and half the time, it's just random clips that are completely nonsensical stuff that doesn't appeal to her. Okay, so that just describes your content to a T. Nonsensical content. You know, for me, that's kind of the appeal of the show to me because I never know what I'm going to watch next. Right? Even though you already pre-screen and you already look at what you're going to react to. So again, it defeats the purpose of a react channel. Right? When I do the react stuff, I don't know what the next clip is. It could be something insightful and incredibly interesting. Uh-huh. So insightful and interesting to see. Uh, Phil, there was a fucking video that you completely fucking skipped. And you gave your shitty takes on it. And it was about top 10 games that created innovation for the genre. You just looked at the games, gave bullshit reasons to why they're on the list, and you just skipped the video. Something that was completely insightful could be actually, oh, I don't know, interesting to watch, but you didn't do it. Instead, you skipped it. So whoever sent that money and paid the money for the membership, yeah, 
get fucked. It could be a funny comedy video. Or it could be some guy standing there and going, I like to fart. I like to fart. I right, fart and fart and fart and fart. And you know, <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. So this is something that Phil likes to look up if you look at his fucking browsing history. Maybe I've never watched that particular clip, but you understand what I'm saying? Like, I mean, we can always check your browsing history. I, we get that variety of stuff. It kind of reminds me of like back in the day, like watching like Adult Swim. On Cartoon Network, how- Oh, how delusional you are. Calling DSP versus the internet. Anything related to Adult Swim. Get the fuck out of here. The shows were so weird and irreverent. And it basically, get, you know, that's kind of the, the, the gimmick. is like you don't know what you're going to watch next. So I like that. Even though people already know what they're going to watch next because there's a thing called the TV Guide. If they look at it, see what's going to come on. But what new shows are going to come out, you're not going to know what you're going to get. Fine, we'll give you that one. But if people already know what they're going to watch on it, then they already know what they're going to watch with it. So again, this whole discussion that you're having already been defeated. About the show, she doesn't. Like, she likes more meaningful clips and stuff, and you don't always get that. Meaningful clips? Like, fucking what? What's considered meaningful for DSP versus the internet? There's nothing! Half the time you're watching, nonsense on that show and I just like DSP react DSP throwbacks and DSP gaming complete nonsense I get that so no she doesn't want to do co-op commentary on DSP versus the internet she doesn't even really watch it herself sometimes she tries to watch it's like oh my god this is so stupid and then she tunes out and doesn't even watch it right yeah I'm having a hard time believing that she tells you I can't watch this you're just putting words into her mouth Phil okay. so you know uh we gotta think. Yeah, some of the shit like like, like C Lab, Aqua Teen, or Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Exactly. No, at least C Lab, Aqua Teen, Hunger Force, and Space Ghost Coast to Coast is actually more entertaining and actually provides good, funny moments. This, what you're doing right now, or DSP versus the internet, provides none of that. It's just mostly boring skips, as well as a little bit of gold dust every once in a while. Other than that, it's nothing. Like that's what. That's kind of like what. The, the DSP versus the internet show feels like to me. Oh, fuck off with the whole thing about comparing it to Adult Swim. This is nothing like Venture Brothers. This is nothing like Metalocalypse. This is nothing like Boondocks. Nothing like Super Jail or Moral Oral. Nothing of that sort at all. Instead, it's just garbage. Like, we're watching such randomness that at any moment anything can happen and something stupid happens and sometimes it's funny and sometimes it's just dumb, right? <laughs> well, then again, though, Phil, what you say makes no sense and what you also say is really fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i love you love how so in his chats like how dare you call X <laughs> xavier renegade angel nonsense yeah how dare you call frisky dingo squid billies and ass mcgee fucking nonsense <laughs> how dare you you fucking heathen see sarah and here's where you get it wrong because sarah says from what you're saying it sounds like cat doesn't want to be in the content wrong uh no sarah's actually right with that though because every single time we see cat on your streams, when you're bringing her on, she looks bored and awkward to be around. She doesn't want anything to do with this content, but you drag her on in because, honey, I need to make that money. I need to hit my tip skulls, honey. She wants to be in content that she enjoys being a part of. There's a difference between me sitting here every day putting out content because it's my job and I've done it for 15 years and I enjoy hanging out with you guys. No, you don't. The only time you ever like hanging out with your audience is if they give you money or they say something in the chat that you want to ban them for. And someone who doesn't do this for a living, hasn't been doing it for 15 years, and is honestly feels more like it's work to sit in front of this camera than anything else. Wow, way to bring up the fact that she's not a streamer for the third, fourth fucking time. Way to bring this point and try to make it completely worthless. She wants to do something that's fun. Even though she could do that all on her fucking own. Downstairs, in front of the TV, in the living room, playing Persona 3 Reload. So we have to find something that would be fun. Your chat has given you many games that you could fucking play, but you completely disregard it and say that they don't know what they're talking about and that they're idiots. It's not that she's not willing to do it. She just wants to have to, to be putting out, like, again, watch the first Q&A video we did in January. Uh, no, I'd rather go watch Pigzar's video of the detractor reactions because at least with those excluding mine, at least those are actually more entertaining to watch because you can actually see the genuine reactions when the cat came on. It's just like, what the fuck did you do to cat, Phil? She's grinning ear to ear the whole time. She's like, no, she was not. At first, she was like awkwardly, nervously smiling, going, hello, chat. And then after that, nothing. She looked bored, staring at your chat.
having tons of fun. Watch the first co-op stream we did Wednesday night. Aside from the very end where she got fatigued, which you could tell she was beat by the end. <laughs> could say that the game fatigued her, Phil. It is fucking stupid to say. And no, she was not having fun with it. She was looking relatively bored. It's like, do you even know what someone having fun is? Do you really think that your wife just sitting there like a bump on a log, not having a time of her life, enjoyable and fun? For someone that claims that he can read his wife well, can't read his own fucking wife well. It's like a roommate that you just dragged on in to do something with, and they don't want any part of it. They'd rather just go get drunk and fuck someone else. We were having tons of fun the entire time. Compare that to each second session, and all you'll see the difference of it's not as fun anymore. Questions have dried up. The game got way boring. That's the difference. So Yeah, the main difference is that you try to pan it out and it wasn't at a good time length. Q&As can easily be done every month or every two months. Same thing with the gameplay. If you would have planned this out a little bit further ahead, then maybe it would have been a little bit more enjoyable, but it's not. The way that you do this, pretending that it's very intelligent and it's very good for a business strategy, it really isn't. Oh, the key is finding the balance of stuff that's going to be fun to do. Well, there is no happy medium of finding something fun to do on DSP Gaming or just anything of the sort. You provide nothing to give that. So that it's fun to watch. Do you understand? Is it fun to watch though? Because a lot of people just look at it and they don't want anything to do with it. They get bored relatively fast. Do you really think that this is a good idea? Or are you just going to keep talking and talking and talking, putting your foot more and more into your mouth? Not just grinding through something because then it's not going to be fun for her and she's not going to have a good time and that's going to come out in the stream, right? Well, Phil, it already came out in the stream way before the second parts of Dundoko Island and the Q&As. It was already there. But again, you can't read your wife for shit. <laughs> glub, glub, glub. I'm a loving husband. Glub, glub. <laughs> Using her for money. Glub, glub. So there you go. <clears throat> yeah, so there you go. <clears throat> Honestly, there's no str uh, rush to get her back on the stream. If she, we have an idea, if you guys have an idea, good thing to maybe put into the suggestion box or to talk about, uh, you know, in the chat. Phil, they already gave you ideas of what you could do, and again, you disregarded it. And I love how you're bringing up the fact that, oh, uh, if you guys have any suggestions, put it in the suggestion box or just type it out in chat. Which, why bother at that point? Because you just said, no, they're not interested in these games. Cat's not interested. I'm not interested. So what's the point of asking for suggestions when you have no desire to acknowledge them? But we've been looking for suggestions. We will look for suggestions, but we're not desperate to have her come back to stream right away to do more co-op or anything like that. No, it looks like you're going to become more desperate because as soon as the money well dries up, Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't do well for money anymore. And any other games that you bring on that are brand fucking new dries up nobody wants to give you money anymore you're going to be very desperate and try to bring your wife back on we liked how it went you know for clearly not because you're bitching and complaining and coping about it how long it did we got the progress we needed so the playthrough continues now with tons of more money and thank no phil you got the progress and you didn't even do a damn thing thankfully it's because of her and her input that we got that far but not in any rush to rush back into it if no one's having fun right phil she was not having fun with it. You could even see it in her eyes. You could see it in her face. You could see it in her body language. She was not having fun with it at all. But you're just going to sit there pretending that she was having fun, even though everyone could see it except for you. So that's what I mean. Let's look into it. Let's see. I'm sure you guys are going to know way more about co-op games than I am. Again, your chat actually did provide you with some good co-op games, and you completely threw them away. So that's that. Okay, so, yes, Dondoko Island, we're done with it. We hit three-star level. That's as far as we're going to go. I don't even want to go back to it myself. You never wanted to do it anyway. You wanted someone else to do it for you, a.k.a. your workhorse of a wife. We got out of it what we needed. The co-op is done for now. We will be looking for future opportunities for fun co-op. We just don't know what it is yet. We have to look into it and try to figure it out. And all of your input is greatly appreciated. Jesus <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, just asking for suggestions, and that bell just came right on out. <laughs> like, Phil, do you not want to do the belching in front of your wife, the snorting, or the throat clearing? 
just because she'll find it disgusting? For God's sake, she lives with you, and you treat me like a room. God. <laughs> I wouldn't give anyone suggestions that did this shit. God, God damn. The time lapse between the late night stream of Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth Dodoko Island to the daily rap to the level one quote unquote podcast. It is a clear night and day of the retcon that he did within the span of a day. Just saying that she was tired and that she wanted to leave. And the way that he would just constantly make up the excuse over and over and over that she's not a streamer and that she doesn't do this. When reality, we already know that she streams, but whenever she got with you, you put a stop to that right then and there. Trying to learn from the past mistakes of Liana, your ex. And yet you want to go on and on and on about how it was a bad thing, blaming the game for providing a boring segment when it was completely fucking optional, when you're going after your viewers by saying that they don't know what they're talking about, and that all the suggestions given to them just made them look like complete fucking idiots. Phil, if you're going to say that you need suggestions, don't disregard all the fucking suggestions right then and there. Just listen to your audience about this like you proclaim that you do, and maybe you can find something that you can do with your wife. But this, ever since that stream, I don't think she's ever going to come back. And if she does, it'll be some fucking miracle that popped out of nowhere. Like Satan came from hell itself just to wreak havoc on the world. But then again, we already know that Satan looks like Phil anyway. But with that said and done, I'm just going to end this off here because goddamn, that was just a massive amount of copium that just came from Philium. Deliver us from the dents. Deliver us from the pay pigs. Deliver us from the pignosis. May we never become dented. May we never become a beggar like Darkseid Phil. And just for the love of fucking God, if your significant other isn't doing too well and they seem annoyed about something, talk to them. If they don't want to talk, give them space and they'll talk whenever they're ready. Don't do what Phil did and just bring on his own wife to do all the work in Dondoko Island for him because it just really makes him look like a terrible husband. But thank you all so much for watching this video. Have a good rest of y'all's day, rest of y'all's night. Keep it really beautiful, people. I'll see y'all in the next video.